And so it's nice to get the opportunity to, to share that with everybody. So equanimity in uncertain times. I really like the name of that because in Buddhism, uh, all times are uncertain times, we know. It's just that now in the world, it becomes something that maybe almost every single person in every single country in the world, maybe for the first time in, in my lifetime, that we can all relate to that, that it's uncertain times. Many countries have gone through uncertain times and, and most people have gone through uncertain times, but never, I think, in a situation where the entire world all the way around felt the uncertainty at the same time uh, of what is going on. So it's a golden opportunity to study some of the Buddha's teachings because the teachings are really about uncertainty. The teachings are really about how do we, how do we achieve peace of mind even though if we take a look at the way the world is and the way this body is and the way this mind is, there is nothing that is certain. And, and, and the really interesting thing is, the really neat thing is, is it's by doing exactly that. It's by seeing over and over again until the mind really understands uncertainty. That's how we rise above the uncertainty and get peace of mind is by actually studying that very topic of uncertainty. That, that's how it's done. And how is that done? How is that done in a way that's going to be very valuable to achieve peace of mind and to have our heart in a much better place is not by looking at the uncertainty out there in the world, like this and that is uncertain, but bringing the attention in and seeing the uncertainty in our own heart. So uncertainty in our heart what that can look like is is many different things many different angles from which we can see the uncertainty in our heart there can be the uncertainty of the fact that when any emotion arises we have no long we have no idea how long it's going to last we have an uncertainty not just about how long any emotion that arises is going to last we have uncertainty about what emotion is going to arise in the next moment. So when I just said that, whether you liked what I said or didn't like what I said or made you hmm, ponder what I said, whatever it might have been, you were, there was no certainty whether you, in, in your own space whether you were going to like, dislike, be or be neutral about what it is that I said. There was also uncertainty about whether your mind was going to be attentive to what I just said. So the sentence that I just said, for example, you can reflect and see, was the mind attentive? Was it still thinking about the last thing I said? Was it remembering something I have to do later? Was it a little bit in pain and adjusting and sort of only part of the attention on me and part of it on uh, adjusting? Was it trying to meditate deeper and get into a, a preferred state, a preferred, more comfortable, peaceful state? And so with some of the attention moving towards ourselves, right? So in any given moment, it is completely uncertain what it is that the mind is going to do. It's uncertain what emotion will be there, how alert our attention will be, or whether it'll, it'll have wandered off and moved to something else. And that uncertainty could be called impermanence when looked at one angle. That uncertainty could be called unsatisfactoriness or insubstantiability, where none of the phenomena that happen stay for long, it just moves to the next one. 
It doesn't, nothing has the ability to persist. It's, it's fading away. And then it can also be seen from an angle of the truth that none of them are a self, that none of these phenomena are a self, that, and there isn't anyone that who is deciding what you feel or what you heard, right? So if your mind just got a little blurry and pondering and thinking what, about what I was talking about, if it felt like it was getting difficult, or if it was if for some of you who was really liking it, or some of you really trying to, oh yeah, practice, practice, trying to remember to practice. Whatever it was that happened, as I was just talking about this a moment ago, to sense that that wasn't you uh, deciding to do that, that whatever phenomenon just arose, arose out of its own causes, out of its own accord. That there wasn't anyone that was the controller of that. And whatever you're feeling now, like right now you're feeling either something happy, something unhappy or uncomfortable, or you're feeling something neutral, equanimous. And, and whichever one of those three that you're feeling in this moment, you can get a sense that that wasn't your decision to feel that way. However, it's feeling now is just how it's feeling now. It wasn't you who chose it. The feeling isn't you. There isn't any of it that's, that's a you. And so that's another way to see the angle, another angle from which we can see the truth of, of uncertainty. So now the, that's, so that's the uncertainty side that Buddhism is, is, is very much interested in, in studying the, the truth of uncertainty. And the, the peace comes when we scrutinize, discern, and see the uncertainty within our own mind and within our own emotions and our own body and come to terms with it, are able to understand and accept the truth of uncertainty. Now, in order to understand and accept the truth of uncertainty to have that very very powerful moment where it's fully accepted once and for all what's required to achieve that moment is equanimity equanimity is the state of mind in its highest form the highest form of equanimity is an equanimity that is the actual gateway to enlightenment, the gateway to that full and utter and final acceptance of the truth of uncertainty. So Rhoda, either wittingly or unwittingly, we don't know, decided to call this forum equanimity in uncertain times and the truth is the internal weather is always uncertain and equanimity towards this uncertainty is the actual highest state of mind capable for a non-enlightened being right